My name is Amber Ahmed and I'm the founder of Mazadar Bakery. I am not a baker or a chef by training or trade. I am a lover of food and a person who has grown up with multiple cultures in a lot of different places around the world. The word Mazadar comes from the Urdu language, which is a language that's spoken in Pakistan, which is where my family is from. And it's a word we use to describe the magic or the essence that makes something special. For me, jewelry has a very special Mazadar. It's something intangible that you just fall in love with. You can't explain why a piece becomes so special to you, or maybe you can, but that mazadar is very personal. It's how you connect with something. You find something, you see something, you're gifted something, and there's a mazadar to that. Mazadar came to be when I went inside myself to think about the things that I really wanted to do the things that I love to do and the things that I knew how to do. So very often in our lives we think about our careers very separate from our aspirations or our loves and dreams and I challenged myself to find a way to bring those together. I said, what do I know how to do? I know how to help build businesses. I know how to do marketing and fundraising. I know how to think about a concept and try to globalize it. And then I said, okay, what do I love to do? I love to cook for people. I love to utilize different cultures and concepts and bring them into a new space. How do I bring those together? Uh, I can do it with building my own food brand. My diamond story started when I think I was 16 years old and my mom and dad gifted me a pair of my mom's earrings, which are these beautiful diamond spirals. And it was an old classic Tiffany design, and uh, she'd had them for years, and I loved them so much. And when she gifted them to me, I felt so special, like a, like a princess, um, and then realized I needed more of them. And I, I think it's true of every girl's diamond story is one is never enough. And this piece is one that I'm particularly proud of and that I love so much. It was after my first year as an investment banker and we get a bonus at the end of the year. So I took my bonus check and people were saying they were gonna go and buy cars or they were gonna go and you'd put a down payment on a summer house or different things like that. And I was like, nope. I walked right into Cartier and I put the check down on the counter and I looked at the guy and he looked at me without even moving his head. He looked down at the check and I said, what will this get me? And he looked again and he said, a visit to the private room. I said, excellent, let's go. So in doing that, the, they designed this ring for me and I absolutely love it. It's a beautiful piece of jade from Hong Kong and uh, it's surrounded by diamonds, sort of in a cage that's protecting what I just am obsessed with. I love the rings that I wear on my, uh, my ring finger. So starting at the very bottom is uh, my wedding band. When my then fiance saw it, he said, what about this? Um, he said, it's just so unique. Uh, there's a, an old story behind it. And I think that's what's really beautiful about natural diamonds is there's an old story behind it. Um, and then there's a new story. And that a natural diamond goes from you to the next generation to the next generation. And I think that's what's so special about them. The ring above my wedding ring is an eternity band, and it is uh, one that goes all around. That's something that was always really particular that my mom had. She always had a preference for a ring that all went all the way around, and she said, we do that because diamonds are not just for show, so it shouldn't just be the part that people see, but it should be for you as well. The next one is my engagement ring, and uh, this, of course, I'm obsessed with, and I love so much. Uh, and the last one, it's the hardest one to wear because it is my mother's wedding band. Um, and it wasn't her original wedding band. Her original wedding band got lost somewhere in travel. And so my father uh, said that he upgraded the, the band. Very often family jewelry, especially these natural diamonds that get passed from generation to generation, only come into your hands when the person before you has left you. Um, and so when my mom died, my sister and I would just stare at her jewelry. And about six months ago, my sister and I kind of made this deep breath of we have to continue to live and she would want us to wear her pieces. And so my sister took a, one of the other pieces my mom wore every day and I took this one. So this is what completes my set. We've done a number of engagements here at the bakery. Uh, our pastries and, and mazadar are so much a part of the sort of celebration and all the other stories that go with getting a diamond on your finger. 
One of my favorite engagement stories was a couple who had their first date here at the bakery and then would come and meet at the bakery very often because it was halfway between where each of them lived. And uh, when they were ready to uh, get engaged, the fiance, he came to me and he said, I want to do a private baking class for my fiance and I. And at the end of it, I want to propose to her. So we did this whole baking class and everything. We did it down in the kitchen and it was really, really lovely. And she was so excited and so happy. And then in the end, I said, listen, we're going to pack up all your pastries. Um, so why don't you guys just go get washed up and then you come back and we'll have the boxes. And in one of the pastry boxes, we had nestled the, um, the ring box. And so as we were handing them the pastry boxes, uh, I said, you should just check them to make sure you have everything that you need in there. And she said, oh no, we're fine. And I said, no, no, just, just make sure in case you want to move pastries around, in case you guys are going to different places or something. She's like, no, no, we're going out together. And I was like, mm. I said, well, just make sure I put the scones in because I know you love the scones and just make sure they're in that box, in that particular box. And, and so she looks at me and she's about to hand it to her, uh, her boyfriend to do that. And he goes, oh, I'm going to just I, shoot. And he's like, let me just quickly tie my shoes before we leave. And she's like, fine. So then I quickly ran. He got down on one knee, she was opening a box, she sees the ring box inside nestled amongst all these pastries, croissant and scones and banana breads, and she turns around to ask what this was, and there he was on one knee, and he proposed. So, that for me was one of my favorite engagement stories. Thank you so much for spending time with me at the bakery. We really hope to see you soon. Get you a pastry.